How you doing everybody? My name is Joe Price. I'm an instructor with Bushcraft Denmark and the Pathfinder School and also a co-founder of Living to Learn over on Facebook. I'm very grateful to Christian and Lars for inviting me along here um, to talk to all you guys at the Danish Outdoor Festival. Thank you all for tuning in. The Danish Outdoor Festival is fantastic. I got to attend it last year. Sadly in the current world climate we all can't be together in a beautiful field in Denmark but at least through the memes of digital we can be so big shout out to all the team who put this together. Currently at the moment I am out hiking in Sweden and I'm about to pick my campsite for the night so I thought I'd make a quick video on a fantastic tool to carry if you're heading outside to do a bit of free sleeve and maybe also talk a bit about how to work alongside mother nature. An awful lot of people who venture out into the outdoors have a brain ghost if you will of wrestling stuff from the land. Um, I'm a big believer in forest living and free love sleep and living alongside nature as it is. So hopefully you can pick up some tips and tricks in this video for being a bit safer outdoors, having good equipment and also choosing what can and cannot be removed from the land. When you get to a campsite, especially one like this, you can see there's an awful lot of hazel, an awful lot of pine, a bit of spruce and it's a bit wind damaged. There's an awful lot of stuff on the ground, stuff in the trees that maybe you don't feel so safe camping under. There is a safe way to choose it and also to remove the odd one that's in your way. But choosing the right one to remove, not damaging anything living, especially in things like national parks where you can't damage stuff, uh, you need to ask landowners permission, etc., etc. It can be nice to choose the right tree to take down using simple science. But very quickly, we'll jump into it. Most noticeably in the front of my pack, you can see my ax. I like to carry this outside use it for crafting projects, etc, etc. This is the Grand Spores Lars Felt Axe. A great little axe for uh, backpacking and day trips. Again, if you're in a place where it allows you to do such things like remove trees. But an axe is very unforgiving, especially to those who are only new to the outdoor. So it may not be the first choice of call that I would recommend to most people, especially, especially if I could go back in time and talk to myself. It's not something that I would recommend I would purchase for the very first trips outside that I take. The reason why is because axes are very calorie heavy. It takes an awful lot of effort to swing it. Also, if you say had hiked to this particular spot like I have today and the weather is bad and you know maybe you're a bit tired, maybe you skipped breakfast because there was chaos at home like we all have before we head out the door when we hike, that an ax and tiredness don't mix, nor does an ax that's swung by someone with a bit of an experience. So where I recommend most people to go, and this can be found in all sorts of outdoor bushcraft literature, especially from people like Morris Kahansky, he, he's a big proponent, or sorry, he was a big proponent um, of saws and their uses outside. But this is the one that I carry. This is the silky big boy. I carry the silky because I used to work in arborist environments and this is the professional tool that the professional arborists use but there's still a little bit of a grey area when it comes to actually looking at silkies there's an awful lot of questions that get asked around them but they are very calorie friendly saws are and they're also very forgiving in inclement weather and tired people and maybe inexperienced a saw will do a lot less damage to you if something goes wrong than an axe will. They come in at around the same price and as you can see both these tools are of the same standard, this being a, a little bit lighter. But this is the Silky Big Boy Outback Edition. This is a limited edition that I happen to know will be available in Freelove's land soon enough. But this is a limited edition from Silky and those who know Silky it needs no introduction. But there is some things I'd like to talk about the saw very quickly for those thinking of purchasing. The Outback Edition most noticeably has this brown handle on the back. Most Silkies will come with a rubberized handle but this handle is made of wood and a plastic composite, very similar to Kapilka for those who use them outside. It's ergonomically designed as well to be used in inclement weather because being an arborist or a tree worker, you're not going to be out on perfectly sunny days. There's going to be rainy days and snowy days, etc. So the grip is designed to be used in multiple positions, very comfortably with gloves and not to cause hand fatigue, unlike an ax. I'm not saying that axes are bad, but axes are carved from wood and wood can be very hard to get those ergonomic shapes. Next up is the blade. The blade has several markings on it for those who are looking at these in stores. It says Silky Big Boy 2000, obviously Outback Edition. Professional. But then it says 360, 6.5. It gives you the batch number and where it's made. This is Japanese steel, some of the best Japanese steel, I have to say, when it comes to saws. The 360 is the overall length, 360 millimeters. So this saw in give or take is 740 mil long. 360 in the blade, 
three, sorry, 60 in the blade and 360 in the handle. The 6.5 stands for the amount of teeth per 30 millimeter. So this is 6.5 teeth per 30 millimeter. So that gives you a uh, inkling to the aggressiveness, the bite that the saw has. Most notably as well is that you'll notice on these, for those who use saws and those who don't use saws, is that the teeth all move in one direction. This saw is a pull saw, not a push saw. So those of us who grew up around saws and carpentry, you will know that a saw will throw dust out in one direction and will pull dust out in another direction. These saws work in just one direction. So it's a soft cut in, an aggressive cut out, and a soft cut in, and an aggressive cut out. And you'll notice that all the dust will be pulled out this way. Most people, when they buy a Silky for the first time, will try and use it like their old granddad saw, or the saw that they have around the home, and they'll end up bending, warping, and twisting the blade. So that's just a tip from the start. These saws work in a very circular motion. The blade is curved. This gives a beautiful cross section when it comes to sitting in trees, that when you pull it back, these teeth get very bitey towards the front. Also, there's two notches on the back here, and those two notches serve a very big purpose, especially if you're working in an area like this, where you want to clear some, some low hanging branches, some stuff like this. Like it has one position that it clicks into, which gives you an awful lot of reach, and I'm gonna reach off camera now, but it allows you to reach up and reach higher into trees, especially if you want to camp in and around the base of one. You can take a few dead limbs off again if it's safe and if you're allowed to do so, but you can remove some dead limbs around camp and it gives you that reach and also a bit of versatility that an ax won't give you. So that's the saw that I like to carry outside when it comes to that and some tips when it comes to silky. Now some top tips when it comes to bushcraft for those of us who are bushcrafters. The two notches, up the top here, are your very man for taking pots off the fire, if you feel brave enough to do so with your silky, but it, it will do it. The spine is very aggressive. The blade on silkies are super thin, and this is what allows them to cut so fast. It's Japanese steel, and it's a laser cut, and that laser cut is very important because it allows them to have this precision in the saw, combined with the fact that it's a pull saw, means that these blades make a very fine, very super cut. But for those of us who like to use a ferro rod, this is super aggressive. And again, if you've got cold hands, wet hands, or even small hands, like if you're working with kids, you can. it's a great way to learn it. Also, this will strike a flint, if you feel that way inclined to, because it's it's got an awful lot of carbon in the blade. So you can strike flint off the back of this all day long, and it's a little bit bigger than most of the little small knuckle dusters that you see people having. So multifunctional and safe is what this saw is. So I thought I'd take a minute now to talk about um, what you might find in trees and how you can spot a dead tree and then how you can remove a dead tree safely from around camp. So first things first, this is clearly a dead tree but I wanted to take a moment to talk about something that forestry workers are doing now all around the world to make things a bit safer. When you see people removing trees in forests now, kind of every couple of dozen trees they will leave something like this half standing. You see it all over the Scandinavian countryside. The reason why they do this is to help create a biodiversity within the forest so as not to remove all the little places that the little critters outside can live. So if you see one of these, try and leave it alone because this is basically the Ritz-Carlton of the forest for little ants and termites and insects and stuff like that. And I thought I'd take a moment to talk about just how important these things are if you see them around. So here's, here's a guy that most would assume that would probably maybe be dead and want to take down. But you got some signs of life, quite obvious for this one. You got these water shoots here at the bottom, which have some fresh growth on it. You can see up the top, although it's not always possible to see that it's got some fresh shoots up there. You know, again, seasonally, some trees may look dead, but they may not be. Another one is the bark on this one is, is somewhat healthy. It's not suffering from what's called bark necrosis, which is a nice one to be able to know and to be able to spot. So I'm gonna take you over to a tree now that actually show signs of, of bark necrosis. So you can see that there's a big difference between this tree and the last tree we looked at. It's got some bark necrosis or the bark is dying on it. There's no water shoots around the bottom. There's no fresh shoots along the top. And then when we look up to the, the root there, there's no fresh buds. It is all the smaller dead branches have all fallen off the tree or been removed in storms. And now there's just one solid trunk all the way up to the to the main crown of the tree, but the crown there is, there is no dead one. So this is standing, dead standing, which will also make good firewood if you needed it. But if it's in the way of the camp, this would be the one to take down. You're not gonna hurt anything that's living, 
and you're not going to do any damage to the surrounding biomes of it. So there you have it folks, um, thank you for joining me on this walk here and before I leave I found a, a, a fallen birch on my way back to camp and I thought I'd take a moment to just talk really briefly um, on the safest cut that you can make when felling a tree. So the first thing that you want to do and the reason why these are so safe is because you never stand behind a tree you're cutting down that's why some of these chainsaws are a bit kind of you know they're more for clearing trails but the silky is very good at making these accurate cuts so the first thing you want to do is make your felling cut this cut here is the direction that you want the tree to fall a bit of practice you can get very accurate with it so our tree is going to go this way this is the gap that's going to close you got a 60 degree angle in here on top doesn't have to be precise a 30 degree angle here on the bottom one-fifth of the diameter in on the trunk I've overcut this a little bit but it's a bit punky so the saw went through it a bit fast but about a fifth this direction then on the back you're going to make your cut here this is a single directional cut a little bit above where this hinge cut or felling cut is going to go then what that is going to do is create your hinge this is going to be your hinge wood you can see this small gap just in here and all of this can be made from a distance with your silky very precisely and just remembering to stand either side never behind it just stand left or right of it and this is the important one don't overcut this or the tree will go and cut it in from the back but always have the like a pac-man always have pac-man facing where you want the tree to fall and that's the way it's going to fall don't cut the hinge too short the shorter the hinge gets the quicker this is going to go now not an arborist video but more of a video to make you aware of how not to damage outside how not to damage yourself some safer tool options to use because mother nature is all of our homes and if we keep going out and keep taking what we're not supposed to be taking from it we won't be all able to enjoy what we love to do out here and the only thing that's dangerous outside is ignorance so thank you for taking the time to join me feel free to delve more into these there's so many sites that you can find these felling cuts and good videos you can check me out on all my social media and once again thank you so much to christian and lars and the danish outdoor festival for having me along i'm going to finish setting up camp here and bed down for the night and i hope everybody is staying safe and having a good time enjoy the rest of the show peace